you must understand your options. So there are multiple ways in which you can invest in these aggressive defensive stocks, hedging strategies. You must identify those options. So predominantly you have three options these days. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to take a look at how can absolute beginners in the stock market invest their first 1 lakh rupees in the stock market. It's a very simple video. I will not complicate anything. I will explain it in a very basic, easy to understand language. And I will explain this entire process in 6 steps. Nothing fancy, just 6 steps. Please listen to it till the very end. Only then it will make sense. Otherwise, you will learn half the things go away and make bad investments in the stock market. So let me walk you through a very simple framework and a process and some methodologies of how you can go about investing 1 lakh rupees, your first 1 lakh rupees in the stock market. Now before I explain step 1, let me explain step 0 that you need to first make 1 lakh rupees or create that 1 lakh investment pool. Only then you will be able to move to step 1. So please make that happen. If you want me to make a separate video on how you can grow your incomes, please comment. I will definitely do it. But there should be enough interest from the community for me to make that video. So for the purpose of this video, I will assume that you have 1 lakh rupees ready that you would like to invest in the stock market. So let's move on to step 1. Step 1 is that you need to understand what your investment goals are. This sounds super complex, super financy. But please bear with me. I will explain it in a very simple language. For example, so if you are someone who is on the left hand side of the spectrum, who is very happy with every type of returns. For example, you say that Akshat, I earn 100 rupees, I invest it in my bank in an FD and I make 106 rupees by the end of the year because FD returns are 6%. So I make 106 rupees and I am very, 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 very happy with that. Your investment goal is what? Your investment goal is to make 6% returns, right? On the right hand side of the spectrum. There are people who keep commenting on my YouTube videos. Bhaiya, teach me how to invest in Bitcoins. Bhaiya, teach me how to invest in Bitcoins because I want to make 50% returns. So there are people on the right hand side of the spectrum also, right? You need to decide that how much return you are happy with. Now you would say that he accept very dumb question. I am happy with 500% return. Tell me how to make 500% return. But okay, let me qualify my statement. So essentially when you expect higher returns, you have to take higher risks. For example, people who keep commenting, Bhaiya, Bitcoin mein invest karna se do. Those people want to make 50% return, 100% return, 500% return, but they are taking higher risks also. So the bottom line is that number one, please understand what your investment goals are in terms of percentage returns. Number two, how much risks you are willing to take. The higher the returns, the higher the risk. Now you might say that, Hey Akshat, you know what? Can you tell us what our investment goal should be? Okay, so my investment goals are that I want to make somewhere between 15 to 25% returns every year depending on the market. That is the return that I have been able to consistently make for over the years and I am very happy with it. Let me explain why this 15% rule works wonderfully well. So now let me explain you by going onto my screen. So let me tell you what rule of 72 means. So 72 means so rule of 72 means that if you divide 72 by x, x is the percentage return that you expect right or the percentage return that you are making. For example, if you are putting your money in an FD, then FD returns are 6%. So it will take roughly 72 divided by 6, 12 years for you to double your money. Right? This is very important. If there is an investor like me who understands how to grow money at 15% rate, then what do I need to do here? Then I need to divide 72 by 15, then it approximately is 4.75-ish years. Right? So it takes me 4.75 years only to double my money. Right? That's one, right? There is a massive difference between investing in FDs where your money grows at 6% vis a vis investing at 15% returns. That's one. Second is that to make this 15% return, I don't have to take massive amount of risks. I'll explain this going forward. But bottom line, what I want you to understand from point one is very simple that you need to understand how much returns you are trying to make, right? Essentially, if you are investing in assets where you are making somewhere around 12% returns, which is not super complex in the Indian market, this is a return that you should be happy with, right? This is the benchmark that I would give you. This wraps up point one. Now rule number two, please diversify your assets. Now diversification of assets means that you are investing that one lakh rupees into different sectors. For example, real estate sectors, banking sector, energy sector, IT sector, etc, etc. So you are diversifying your money across different sectors and you are diversifying your money across different stocks. For example, if you are investing in let's say technology stocks, then don't just simply pour all your money in TCS stocks. Diversify that, right? 
A simple rule for diversification that I would leave you with is that never invest, never ever invest more than 5 to 10 percent of your entire capital in one single stock, right? Never invest more than 10 percent of your money ever in one single stock, no matter how confident you are that that stock is going to go up unless you have insider's information of course. So especially for beginners, follow this rule of diversification because this will help you stay in the stock market in the long run. Now, if you stay in the stock market for 10, 15, 20 years, you will gather so much learnings and so much experience that you can use that experience then to make money subsequently. But if you make a very foolish move that you put all your one lakh in one stock, let's say ITC or TCS, and if that company does something bad, all your money might get wiped out. Okay, so follow this rule of diversification. I can't stress enough on this. So the key takeaway here being that if you have 1 lakh rupees, so you need to buy how many stocks? Roughly 10 to 15 stocks. That's it. Don't go above that and don't go below that. Now you would say, Akshat, okay, which stock should I buy? So let me explain you the fundamentals and this is not an investment advice. So this brings us to point number three. Please go and buy 40% stocks, which are called as defensive stocks. So what are defensive stocks? Let me quickly show it to you. I have explained this concept earlier also, but I'll explain it very quickly again for people who have just started watching my videos. So defensive stocks are stocks which do not fall massively when the stock market crashes or there's a correction in the stock market. And again, it does not grow massively when the stock market is booming. For example, HUL, Hindustan Unilever is one such stock. So let me quickly explain you the chart. So if you take a look at the data for the last five years, you will see that hey, it has reasonably gone up right? So it has reasonably gone up. That's it, right? It has hardly shown any massive dip. When did it show a massive dip? It was somewhere here, right? What was this time? This was the Corona 2020 time, right? Corona 2020 crash came and a lot of stocks corrected, but how much did HUL correct by, right? So it did not fall massively, right? It was moving at somewhere around 2400 levels and it fell to somewhere around 1800 levels. So not a massive correction compared to some of the other stocks. For example, if you compare it to aggressive stocks, like Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finance corrected by 65, 70%, but HUL corrected by 25, 30%. So these are defensive stocks. What are some of the other defensive stocks? These would be companies that make commodity like goods that we keep on consuming despite any sort of pandemic. These would be companies like Dabur, Nestle, ITC, because we keep on using their products on everyday basis. Now, how can you identify defensive stocks? That's a very interesting question. So essentially, one of the key ways in which you can understand defensive stocks or identify defensive stock is that their growth is stable. That is a very important concept to note. For example, if I show you the numbers for HUL here, if you take a look at the growth of HUL, you will see that the growth has literally like, I mean, it's literally mirroring, right? It has been growing by approximately 3000 crores every single year. For example, take a look from 2010 to 2011, roughly 3000 difference. Similarly, 3000 difference. Similarly, 3000 difference. Similarly, 3000 difference. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that this is a very stable looking company. So the growth rate is also very predictable. So this is a highly defensive stock and you must have 40% such stocks on your portfolio. You might say, Akshat, okay, understood the concept of defensive stocks. Now, can you tell me which defensive stock should I buy? Should I go and buy HUL right now? Because HUL is trading at a very high price. So I am out of HUL. I'm not buying it as of now. Whenever a dip comes, I'll repeat it again. Whenever a dip comes, you should buy it. And here is another important rule for you to notice. So I am showing you the chart of Nestle. So Nestle is one such defensive stock and it's a very big company, very stable company, very stable revenues, profit margins, etc. Now, if you take a look at the chart of Nestle, again, like upward sloping curve, it hasn't gone down. Generally, it has been rising. Now, if you take a look at the last one year, what can you notice? You see this line, right? This, this is called as 200 day moving average. Okay. Now here is the rule that whenever a defensive stock falls close to the 200 day moving average line, for example, 30th April 21 was when Nestle fell to around 16,309 levels, right? You should have bought it. I bought it, right? Because it was below the 200 day moving average line, right? So if it is trading around this 200 day moving average line, 200 day moving average literally means that if you take the average of the last 200 days, what is the average price of that stock? It is indicated by this line. So whenever the stock gets close to this line, buy it. If it is way above, don't buy it. Right now, you might say that yeah, Akshat, Nestle is way up. But again, you need to see this scenario in context of the current stock market trends. So currently the stock market is slightly high, right? It is at an all time high. So of course you will hardly find any shares that are trading below their 200 day moving average, 
very important point to note because the current nifty is trading around 16,000 levels it is at an all-time high so of course all the individual stocks will also be trading at a very high price right so but having said this i still feel that nestle is at a decent position to buy you can consider buying it if you're looking for a defensive stock to aggregate you need to do this type of analysis for almost every defensive stock you need to pick defensive stock do this analysis which are trading around the 200 day moving average line this is the simplest way of buying stocks you cannot go wrong and you will not lose money on these defensive stocks if you are buying the stocks at around that 200 day moving average line so just to quickly recap rule number two that just simply go buy defensive stocks identify if they are trading around that 200 day moving average line or if you say that, hey, you know what, Akshat, that is a lot of work. I don't have time. Then I would suggest one small case here. It's called as low risk smart beta small case. And you can look at the stock weights and portfolios. So it has some good pharma companies. It has Asian paints. It has Britannia, which is a defensive stock. Colgate, Dabur, defensive stocks. HUL, I, talk, I talked about it. ITC is a defensive stock. So it has a bunch of defensive stocks. And it's a good small case to buy from that perspective. The good thing about small case is that the rebalancing is done from time to time. Right, because you might say that hey, Akshat, I can see all these stocks, I can just myself go and buy. You can do it if you're active in the stock market. Otherwise, you simply go invest in this small case and you will get the notification when this rebalancing happens and you can rebalance your stock portfolio. So you don't need to manually track all the changes that are happening. Point number four, go and invest 40% of your money in slightly aggressive stocks. Now again, please change it depending on your expected returns. This ties into point one that I was saying that you need to define your goal. How much money are you happy with and how much returns you are expecting to make and accordingly take risk. But the advice that I'm giving on point number four is for investors who are slightly risky like me and want to make around 15-20% returns a year. So you go and invest 40 to 60% of your money, 40% if you are a beginner. So go and invest 40% of your money in slightly aggressive stocks. So what are aggressive stocks? So aggressive stocks are stocks when the market is going up, these stocks will do really well. They will also go up very, very high. When the market is doing poorly, these stocks will fall like crazy, right? For example, take a look at banking sector stocks. Let's analyze ICICI bank. You can literally analyze any bank. And let's look at the chart for the last three years. So do you see that how much was the massive fall? So from approximately 545, it fell to 286. Almost 50% correction happened, right? So this is a aggressive stock. Now when the market recovered, so you see this line recovering, it literally touched 650 points. So massive jump in the stock price when the market started recovering. So you need to have these type of stocks also to make money in the stock market. Sectors like bank, small finance bank, for example, I am personally heavily invested in a small finance bank called as Equitas Capital. It has already given me massive returns and I'll continue to hold it. I would not advise you to go and invest if you are a complete beginner because it's a small finance bank. So it's even riskier. So you must go and invest large caps. So large cap are big company stocks like HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, HDFC AMC, Hero Motor Corp. So all these are very, very good aggressive stocks. Now let me show you one good stock which is called as Hero Motor Corp, right? Now I feel that this is priced at a good valuation. So you can definitely check it. And now why am I saying it? Now again, do you see the 200 day moving average line? It's trading. The current stock price is trading below the 200 day moving average line. You might say that, hey, Akshat, you know what? This might be a bad stock. Therefore, it is trading below its 200 day moving average despite market touching its all time high. So let's look at the finances of this company as well, right? So it's a big company. It's a 58,346 crore company, right? It's a big, big company. If you look at the quarterly results. So the quarterly results have been fairly stable, right? Except for June. And March and June, these two quarters, everyone suffered. So this company also suffered. But results have been fairly stable. If you compare it to 2018 numbers, 1400 profit. Here they are making 1200 profit. Net profit was 1360. Here the profits are somewhat stable. Now, what was the price in back in June 2018? So let's quickly check, right? Back in June 2018, what was the price, right? So let's go here. So back in June 2018, the price was trading at 3319, right? 3319 and now it's trading at 2919 right despite the markets attaining new height so i do feel that this is fairly priced this is somewhat fairly priced and this can be considered again not an investment advice but this is a simple methodology that you can use to identify good aggressive stocks and add it to your portfolio now there is one final point that i would like to tell you about investing in aggressive stocks so there are two three things that you need to keep in mind so first and foremost the aggressive stock should have a very high market cap so on here you can see that hey hero motor corp 
has a market cap of 58000 crores right it's a big company it's not a very small company in which we are investing number 2 the debt should be low right why because right now the market is very high right everything is going hunky dory even if you buy high debt companies it's okay but whenever the market falls companies which have very high debt that have taken on a lot of loans they are the first ones to go under right so the debt should not be high so this also meets our criteria and then return on capital employed roce should be high right so anything above 20 is considered to be decent especially for automotive manufacturing type of companies so 25 roce means that how is the company utilizing its capital for example if i go and give hero motor corp 100 rupees to invest on my behalf how much money is it going to make so it is going to make 125 rupees because the return it is generating through its venture is 25.3% So keep these three points in mind. If the company exhibits all these three points in collection, it's a good company to invest in. Now you might say that, hey Akshat, you know what? We don't have time to again go keep tracking 200 DMA. What should we do? So if you are pressed on time, if you can't do your own investments, you can go and try to invest via small cases. There is something called as sector trackers. So what you can do is that you can invest little little money in each of these high growth sectors like banking tracker. You can go and invest. Another aggressive sector would be something like energy, right, which is picking up. So I also spoke about the EV sector in India, how it's growing. So you can take a look at this auto tracker small case also, and divide your amount into four parts and invest via four different small cases. Because again, it will give you the option of getting timely updates on when your portfolio is getting rebalanced. So very quickly recapping so far. Number one, try to identify your goals, how much return you are happy with. Number two, diversify your assets. Number three, invest forty percent of the amount in defensive stocks. Number four, invest forty percent of amount in the aggressive stocks. Number five, build hedges. Right, so hedging means that now you have invested forty percent in aggressive, forty percent in defensive. Other twenty percent use for hedging. Hedging means that you buy commodity goods. For example, buy commodities like gold or silver. This will help you hedge. Even when the stock market was going down, silver prices were not getting hit. Right, so that was a good part. So that is what hedging means. That when the market goes down. the commodity in which you have invested it is not going down so that's a good part especially when you are starting you should always have little bit of hedging done number 6 you must understand your options so there are multiple ways in which you can invest in these aggressive defensive stocks hedging strategies you must identify those options so predominantly you have three options these days number 1 you can go and directly invest in stock markets yourself for this you must study stock markets first understand the basics I have created a lot of videos about what bull run is, how to study economics, how to implement finance, all those concepts. Please do study it; that will help you understand. But you also need a little bit of time in terms of keeping up to date with the market news and incorporating that into your portfolio. So that's one. Number two, your second strategy is that go invest via the mutual fund routes because ultimately the money that you are investing in your mutual fund it is eventually used by your mutual fund manager to either buy stocks and bonds and other asset classes. The primary disadvantage is that if you are buying actively traded mutual funds, some money goes into commission. I'll probably make another video on mutual funds. Do let me know. Do comment if you would want me to do that. But essentially, if you are investing in actively traded mutual funds, number one, you will lose out money in commissions, and number two, you would not really know where your money is getting invested. And number three, you can go and invest via small cases. I have made a lot of videos on small case investing. If you would want me to make, I'll make a complete detailed video on small case investing as well. That will give you more idea. So I hope you would be able to incorporate and understand these six steps better. That will help you invest your first lakh. in the stock market investing in stock markets is a wonderful journey it will teach you a lot in terms of analyzing your investment analyzing different companies and you will get to learn a lot from it so best of luck let me know if you have any questions please comment please like this video that would mean a lot to me thank you and i will see you the next time